Over these past few months in London, the hardest part of lockdown is when I catch a glimpse of the city, almost taunting that it still exists. It's a painful reminder that we are so close, yet so far from a normal life. So keeping on trend, let's do a not normal video and answer some of the hundreds of lovely questions you guys sent in. Everything from life in London, the problem with Instagram cafes, and the awkward secret I shared when we first started dating. This is Suitcase Monkey answering your burning quest. Let's go to the first question. Oh, I've seen the other, the other more popular YouTubers. They, they do this and then it, it cuts to the next scene. It, oh, for what's your secret talent? Tone may not be accurate. So I don't really have any cool party trick or anything. Um, but Chiaki has been very impressed with my Japanese pronunciation. I'm trying, I've kind of given up with learning Japanese. It's a very difficult language, but I've got some good Japanese pronunciation, she, she tells me. My favorite Japanese sentence, Kolewa nandeska. Kolewa nandeska. It sounds great. Kolewa nandeska. And what it basically means is like, what's that? And so it's a really fun game to play around the house, especially when you're with a Japanese person, to be like, Kale wa nan desu ka? Table. Kale wa nan desu ka? Banana. Kale wa nan desu ka? Telebi. Kale wa nan desu ka? Toilet paper. Hours of fun. What do you love most about London? The history. Uh, and by that, I don't mean just, you know, history. But that's why in the, in the five days in London video, I suggested to start with the Tower of London and the, and the city area, because that's obviously, that's the oldest part. The parts of that, that's like 2000 years old. But when you're in the Tower of London, like you can you can feel the history uh, that went on there, and even like more more recent stuff. Uh, it was only a couple of years ago I was walking. It's only a couple of minutes from uh, Regent Street, and I was walking, and I suddenly realised that up there is where the Beatles played their last ever gig for Let It Be. It's like right in central London, a couple of minutes from from Regent Street, and I was like, oh, that's that's where the Beatles did their did their gig. So yeah, just lots of little things like that. Like you, uh, it's just, yeah, it's just great. I, I love kind of being a part of that. When the sun comes out, there's no better place. The whole city comes alive and it's super cool. Worst travel moments, always good for laughs later. So we've never really had anything horrendous happen. Never had any total nightmare stories. Um, but one that immediately springs to mind is we went to Tuscany for a week. And the idea was we were gonna kind of road trip around Tuscany and we rented a car right from the airports so we landed and within sort of half an hour we were we were in the car and one of us I'm not gonna say uh, which one of us was driving and within about 10 minutes we'd smashed our wing mirror so we we went back to the airport we weren't we didn't get the extra insurance we kind of had to pay a fortune there and then the other one of us uh, took over the driving from that point onwards uh, and everything went absolutely fine have you ever visited Canada I'm from Vancouver area. We were actually supposed to be going to Canada in a couple of weeks. Uh, obviously that's been canceled. We were supposed to be going to Toronto for about six or seven nights in this amazing Airbnb, really cl uh, close to the city center. Then we were gonna take a flight to Calgary, spend a night in Calgary, and then spend about seven or eight nights in Banff and Jasper, the national parks. That was the original plan. Obviously that's not happening now. The flights have been canceled. Everything in terms of Rebooking it. Everyone's been really good in terms of booking.com, no cancellation fee there. Airbnb, no cancellation fee. Uh, we booked a car with National Car. That was totally fine. Got the insurance back that we booked for the car specifically as well. So that's all good. Air Transit, which was the airline that we booked with. Uh, no refunds for that, despite the flight literally being cancelled. We might be getting vouchers as a, as a best case scenario. But uh, to answer the question, yes, we would like to go to Canada, but one day soon. What was the worst thing your wife found out about you and you were deeply embarrassed? So when I was in the dating game, um, there was a few questions that I would ask. There was like a litmus test to see how they would uh, react. And one of them is that I'm a massive professional wrestling fan. I've loved uh, pro wrestling since 1990. I went to WrestleMania 25. I was in row five at WrestleMania 25 cost me $800 for the seat, and this is in 2009. Uh, so I, yeah, I flew out to Texas. I got a, a limited edition chair. When you sit on the, the first 12 rows or something, you get a limited edition chair. So there's only like a thousand of them in the world, and, and you know, that's, I'm, just li I'm living the dream, basically. So, but I would talk about this to see how they would um, react, and then I would judge them based on their reactions. So when I was talking to Chiaki, I think it was date number two, I mentioned this, so I was like, hey. And also as well, I'd just done, I was on a, a, a UK wrestling TV chat show, uh, and I was talking about my favorite wrestling podcasts. 
I was tongue in cheek when I did this, but after I got the footage, I then did a director's commentary over the top of it with the idea of, hey, look, I'm now on television. Aren't I famous and great? I'm going to give you some tips and tricks. Obviously, I'm part of the part of the industry now, quite a well-known celebrity, although you know, I don't like to use that word, but um, that is what I've been described as. I, show, I told her all this and I, I showed her this. Now, a lot of people would run a mile from that, but she was quite interested by that, uh, which was which was a relief. So then I took her, I was like, cool, wicked, here we go. So we went to Progress Wrestling, uh, which is like an independent one in Camden. A quick post edit note here. Jackie also wants me to point out that the show lasted for five hours. And she wasn't really very impressed. And uh, that was the last we spoke of it. And one thing just to say while I've got your attention, uh, I'd never really say this in the videos, but my YouTube analytics tell me that loads of you guys who watch my videos aren't actually subscribed to the videos. So it'd be really, really, really appreciated if you could just scroll down a little bit on this video and just hit that subscribe button. Like if you're already watching my videos, it just basically tells YouTube that you like my stuff and then it sort of recommends them to other people. So if you could do that, that would be immensely appreciated. Thank you very much. What's so special about fish and chips in London? Tell us your favourite. What I like to have whenever we have fish and chips is have cod or haddock, either or doesn't really bother me, a battered sausage, 100%, gravy, and then get either a bap from the place or if we're just having it here, I'll just get some bread. So you can have a chip butty and uh, put the chips in there. Uh, and that's very nice and dunking them in the, in, the, in the gravy sauce as well. So yeah, but the battered sausage uh, with the fish and the chips, that's my top tip. I was thinking that when you have to shoot so many videos, do you actually enjoy the moment or are you constantly with a camera or a phone trying to cover everything in order to have interesting content? So yeah, this is something that I'm super, super aware of. Um, my internal motto is that my holiday comes first. It's not, you know, it's not sponsored holiday. It's literally just us going on holiday and I happen to, to film it and then make a video on it. We, we don't do any retakes. If a moment happens and we miss it, then, you know, that's that. But to give you an example, on last year's Japan holiday, that was probably when I did the most filming. That was 15 days holiday, and I took two and a half thousand video clips uh, for that whole fortnight. Most of the video clips are just like six or seven seconds, fairly quick. I suppose one good thing is that Jackie's really into photography, so while she's taking photographs, I'm kind of doing video. But yeah, it probably takes away 15% you know, of the holiday. But I think I get some of that back when I'm editing it and going through the footage afterwards. I, I kind of enjoy looking back at it and it's sort of, it's a way of reliving the holiday again while I'm putting it all together. So to answer the question, ultimately no, but it's something that I'm always aware of and I, I don't want it to. How to small talk like a Londoner. You talk about the weather. In England, we love the weather. The weather's fascinating. Like if you live in California, today it's sunny. It's like, yeah, I know, it's sunny yesterday, it's sunny tomorrow, it's sunny. It's not interesting. In England, it's like, is there cloud? Is it like cloud with blue sky? Is it like cloud with a bit of sun? Is it rain? What sort of rain are we talking? Are we talking drizzle? Are we talking pissing it down? How much time is needed to travel most of Japan? A very, very long time. That's why we have decided to sort of break down the areas because ultimately we know we're, we're going to keep going back every every few years. First time we went we did Tokyo, Mount Fuji and then kind of up north to Shibu Onsen and then when we went last year we kind of went Tokyo again but then Kyoto uh, and then Gifu the kind of mountain area after that and sort of Takayama and stuff so you know next time we're planning on going we're thinking Osaka. I'm a big Nintendo fan so in Universal Studios they should have Nintendo Land open by then. So Osaka we're thinking of maybe starting, and then uh, Hiroshima sort of further out on the west, and then Kyushu I think it is, the, the sort of smaller island on the bottom left, and maybe Okinawa. So that's kind of all the, those places apart from Osaka, it's kind of in the middle, all those places in, in one area. So we're trying to break it down. You know, if you're only ever gonna go once, then Tokyo, Kyoto are, are kind of uh, everything you really need. But because we know we're gonna keep going back, we wanna try and break it up into little pockets. Are you going to buy a drone? Probably not. There's been a few times when I wish, you know, I wish I had, because I know it would make the video look better. When I was in the, <laughs> when I was in the Maldives, I wanted, I wanted a drone. I had this idea where I thought if I film in slow motion and throw the iPhone up into the sky, as it came down, there might be this beautiful kind of, uh, drone-like moment, but no, it, uh, it didn't work.
Would you rather only be able to eat or only able to drink forever? Eat food 100% of the time. Food for us, uh, you know, as, as anyone who's watched a lot of our videos, like the Maldives video, like I did a whole part on food there. Like that was probably the best restaurant just because they cooked so many different dishes from all over the world. Tuscany as well had really amazing food. And probably as well, actually, when we were in Barcelona last year, probably my favorite meal of that trip was the morning market that we went to. We got there at like 8 a.m. in the morning. It was really quiet just before it got really busy. And just the, the food and the omelet and stuff, ugh, amazing. So food 100% of the time. Best place you have been? I probably don't have a best place, but one that just springs to mind straight away when I think of that was in the Japanese Alps at the end of our of last year's Japan holiday. There's this amazing gondola ride that takes you up. It's one of the highest peaks in Japan. And just the view from the lookout point is absolutely amazing. But what, what really sort of got it for me was that you can, there's a little cafe you can eat and stuff there, which is really cool, but there's a little ravine and the snow's kind of on either sides. And that basically, that ravine will take you all the way to the next mountain range for a few hours if you want to walk it. We just walked for about 10 or 15 minutes. And just within that time, it literally felt like we were the only people in the world. There was nothing else going on. It was total silence. Uh, and it was just a bit of a moment. It was right at the end of the Japan holiday and it kind of felt like a bit of a, a peak, uh, which is why I wanted to end the video with it. Does anyone sponsor you or all out of pocket? So I can assure you, I say no a lot more times than I say yes. Um, I've only done two sponsored video. One was with Artlist, who are the people I get most of my music from. Two free months in the description below if you're interested. I've got a little list here of things that I've said no to. Sports underwear. I don't think I quite fit the brand there. Pocket Wi-Fi, a manor house thing in England. A trip to Wales, which is quite nice, but it was like winter and I was like, Dude, if I go and it's really rubbish weather, I don't want to be stuck with making a video being like, this is great, when, when it was raining all the time. Lovely weather we're having here. Having a great time. A yacht week around Turkey, uh, water shoes, a fanny travel pack, or a bum bag, as we would say. But yeah, the point is, you know, if I, if I do a sponsor, then, you know, at least have some confidence that I'm not just doing it because I'm selling myself out. A quick note for any potential sponsors out there. Um, I will absolutely sell myself out if the right free holiday comes along. Uh, thank you. Thank, thank you very much. Have you ever experienced a culture shock in your own country? Uh, so, yeah, I have, actually. In 2009, I did a solo trip around the world. I did, did parts of the States, Australia, New Zealand, Thailand, Laos, Vietnam, China, Hong Kong for about five or six months. When I came back, because I'd been in tourist mode for half a year, when I was walking around, I was, for the first time, seeing it as a tourist. I was like, oh my God, like, all, there's all these buildings that I just walk past every day and don't even think about. And that ultimately was kind of one of the inspirations when I made the, the London tourist video, like, this is how I would do London as a tourist. It's because I'd had that experience. And I was like, wow, we live in this great place. We should really start doing more stuff. What's been on your bucket list for a while that you haven't ticked off? Canada, obviously, uh, India, New Zealand. I did, I did most of New Zealand on my, on my solo trip but I, I miss some parts like Milford Sound and, and Queenstown and stuff near the near the south. Uh, Melbourne, like to go to, um, and the moon. How is a proper cup of tea brewed there? What snacks go with tea time on a daily basis? What time is tea time? We're not really just drinking tea all the time and having tea time. Like I don't even really know what tea time officially is and, and all that, it's not something that we do. I would assume it's probably between like two and four, two and five, and it's probably tea and a couple of biscuits and stuff. To answer the question, though, the thing I, I can answer, so this is how I do a cup of tea. I'm, I'm fairly common. So you've got your PG Tips, or your Tetley's, or your, or your Tesco's own brand, and you, you whack in the hot water, you know, maybe half an inch of milk, give, give it a bit of a stir, and that's it. One thing I would recommend is a chocolate hobnob. So they're in the blue packet. If you see chocolate hobnobs in the supermarket, blue packet, you've got to check out the chocolate hobnob. It's this. It's such a Moorish biscuit, and it goes with the uh, with the with the brew really well. Um, I'm actually thinking of doing a uh, an English snack food video, so let me know if that's of interest. But a cup of tea and a chocolate hobnob. Mmm. What kind of dogs do you see most in London? Well, now your question assumes that I know breeds of dog. Um, I don't really know breeds of dog. I know I know poodle. I know Labrador and then everything else is just a dog. So, poodles and dogs, I see a lot of those around. A place that disappointed you. So yeah, I, I spent a bit of time trying to think of this. I don't think I really have a place that's disappointed me. Like, 
so then I was kind of thinking like just places in general that, that disappointed me and I, I came up with a few different Instagram cafes because you know I've done a, a cake cafe London video and I'm, I'm sort of want to do another one and uh, so I've been looking at different different restaurants and, and cafes and stuff to maybe feature for a, a future video and when you're looking on Instagram uh, there's one that's called I think it's uh, Elan 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 there's a few of them around London, but they're like so Instagrammable. You know, everything's everything's pink, and you're, you're scrolling through the feed. It looks amazing, and I was really close to going and filming it. I mean, like, hey guys, check out this place. But then, you know, you go on TripAdvisor, and you know, it's overpriced. It's bad service. The food's eh. So yeah, there's loads and loads of Instagram cafes in London. So I think if ever you are coming to go to a cafe, if it looks really good, just double check that it is actually good, as opposed to just looking good. Hello. I wonder if you vlog slash travel full time. If not, what do you guys do for a living? Uh, no, it's not full time, which is why it takes me an absolute age to get a video out. Um, but to answer the question, I work in retail, Jackie works in uh, finance. How many hours of video and preparation goes into a video and do you prepare the voiceover text before or after the video cut? To be honest, I wouldn't like to think about it. Uh, if, if I added it up, it's too long. My London video, for example, probably took, obviously I was filming everything, that's, that's one thing, but actually sort of sitting down, thinking about it, writing, editing, um, maybe like five or six weeks in total. My process is that I will, once I've got the footage, I'll look at the footage. Based on that, then I'll do an intro. Sometimes I'll, I'll write the whole script ahead of time. Most of the time though, to be honest, I'll kind of, I'll do an intro, uh, I'll get the footage down, and then I'll look at kind of the next thing, and I'll look at that and go, right, what do I want to say about this? Write the script, and then sort of match the footage to that and then change things around depending on how it just sort of fits uh, after that. But yeah, five or six weeks for, for like a big long video, or maybe a couple of weeks for like a, just sort of a tips, tips video. So as I mentioned before, if you do watch these videos, if you watch more than a couple um, and you're not subscribed, please, please, please do hit that subscribe button. It does really help us and is um, appreciated. If you want your questions answered for future Q and A's, if you've enjoyed this, then leave as many questions as you can think of down in the comments below. Some future videos I've got coming up, I say I'm gonna do a, a Vietnam one at some point. I still have a few more Japan videos left in me. I wanna do a video about costs and, and how much it costs to go to Japan. And I might do one about food. I may or may not do that, depends on how I feel. And then for London, I've got like a museum one in the pipeline, a market one. I just wanna kind of finish, wait for all this stuff to finish so I can see what markets are still open um, to do that one. Uh, a couple of those London snack videos that I mentioned before as well. Thank you very much. Not quite sure how I end this. Oh, maybe I'll do this.